Biowatch South Africa is a, a small NGO. We were established in 1997 and it was in a context in South Africa where there was very little civil society involvement or awareness around the Convention on Biological Diversity as well as aspects of the World Trade Organization and with respect to Biowatch it was particularly the patents on living organisms, the patents on plants and animals. We've always stood for social and ecological justice. We do a lot of work around sustainable agriculture, the alternatives to industrial agriculture. And it was really through this work that our focus for many years became that of genetically modified crops. Biowatch wants information on genetically modified crops to be in the public domain. We want information on the impacts on health, on environment, and the social impacts. However, it's not only information on GM crops that needs to be in the public domain. It's issues around industrial agriculture, on the myths that will solve poverty, our energy crisis. These need to be dispelled, and Biowatch will do what it can to work towards that. In 1997, the South African government, through the Department of Agriculture, uh, gave permission for field trials of GM crops of cotton and of maize and Biowatch was very aware that there was very little information in the public domain, very little understanding of issues around it and for us there were key issues around GM crops both from an environmental perspective, a social perspective and obviously a health perspective as well. So in 2000 and 2001 we made several approaches to the department, formal approaches requesting information on GM crops and we either received very little information or no information. And so in 2002, we were forced to take the department to court to get that information. In 2003, we had Monsanto and Syngenta and Panar all joining the state voluntarily um, to protect their business interests. In 2005, there was the judgment. And in this judgment, Biowatch was granted access to most of the information requested. It was eight of the 11 counts. There were huge implications for the country in terms of access to information. Here was a public, an organization acting in the public interest, coming to court and actually getting that information. And that information should have been in the public domain. However, the sting in the tail for Biowatch was that the judge had also ordered that we should pay Monsanto's legal costs. And this, at, a, at an organisational level, was devastating. We are, are a small NGO, we rely on donor funding. Um, that funding goes mainly towards the projects, to the, the, the communities that we work with. There are no reserves. However, it was not only Biowatch that this judgment, that this cost order um, affected. It was any other civil, civil society organisation in the country who, acting in the public interest, used the courts. And even though they might gain access to the information they required, they could still be slapped with a devastating cost order. And it was for this reason that Biowatch actually took the matter on appeal. However, in the High Court, we lost our appeal. We took it further to the Supreme Court. We lost our appeal. And fortunately, we were able to take the matter to the Constitutional Court. The Constitutional Court is the highest court in the country, and it could hear the case because the issues were of constitutional importance. Um, I should say that we wouldn't have got this far without the support from an enormous number of organisations, but in particular the Legal Resources Centre, who took us through from the High Court Appeal through to the Constitutional Court. We had the Centre for Applied Legal Studies, Lawyers for Human Rights, and the Centre for Child Law, who joined us in the application in the, in the Constitutional Court. And there was overwhelming support from civil society. The case was heard in February 2009, and in June 2009, there was the Constitutional Court judgment. It was a resounding victory, both for Biowatch and for organisations acting in the public interest. The judgment was unanimous, it was a full bench, and the costs order was reversed, so Biowatch no longer needed to pay Monsanto's legal costs. The Department of Agriculture was ordered to pay Biowatch's legal costs. This was important as in the first place the information should have been provided to Biowatch. During the last seven to eight years of the legal battle we've continued with our work but it's always been 
under this dark cloud of the costs order. This has now gone. We can now continue with our work for social and ecological justice. Our work is on two levels. We are working with small scale farmers, particularly in the eastern region of South Africa. Here we focus on an agroecological approach to agriculture, completely different to the industrial model of agriculture that genetically modified crops are, are form part of. An agroecological approach is one which supports low input agriculture. It's not using chemicals, it's not using fertilizers or genetically modified crops. It is preserving biodiversity. It's having seed banks which are controlled by the farmers or by the households. The control of seeds is in those hands, it is not in the corporate hands. This is important for both um, farmers' rights and for food security and more generally for food sovereignty. Worldwide, such an approach has been shown to improve production, it's better for the environment, it keeps control in the hands of the farmers. It is a more resilient form of, of agriculture, particularly when one's looking at issues around climate change. Biowatch is working in South Africa for a situation where small-scale farmers have control over their seed, over their biological resources, over their land. It's important that social and ecologically just systems of agriculture are in place and we will be doing all that we can to ensure this.